Professor Klein here in the BIOS 1300, 1310 laboratories at Ohio University. Today, we're taking a look at the female reproductive model that we've constructed, and let's jump right into it. Uh, first off, from an anterior view, what you can notice is the bladder. So this structure here is the bladder, and we can see at the bottom the urethra branching off of the bladder itself traveling into what's called the labia minora. This is like layers of skin and fat and connective tissue uh, surrounding the urethra where it opens up. Furthermore, from a lateral view, we can see the bladder urethra as anterior to the vagina. This is the vagina right here as it travels up to meet the uterus. Now the uterus is tough to see from this model, so we're going to focus on the external structures. For example, the fundus of the uterus is this top extra bump of the uterus. And coming off of the, bump, or of the fundus is the uterine tube. Uterine tube on either side, also called the fallopian tube. Now the fallopian tube, uterine tube, it has the isthmus as this first section of the tube. Right where it begins to hook or turn, it becomes the ampulla, which is where a majority of fertilizations of the egg occur. And finally, the infundibulum, this last section before these finger-like projections occur, which are called fimbrae. Fimbrae, if we look on the other side, will actually wrap around the ovary, which is this blue structure. So the fimbrae would wrap around here and the egg would travel into there. Additionally, we have the broad ligament, or the mesovarium, broad ligament, and the ovarian ligament, which we can see here, traveling from the ovary up to the perimetrium of the uterus. Finally, not actual size, but we have the egg down here, which will be released from the ovary to potentially get uh, fertilized by a sperm.